Today we're looking at Funhole's newest set, the camper van. They sent me this one to share with y'all and I'm pretty excited about it because I'm a big fan of old pickups and a sucker for RVs. This set has 1,741 pieces and an included lighting kit. In my opinion, Funhole has some of the best instructions, even better than Legos. Funhole also uses Go Bricks, which I'm a big fan of, and are just as high quality as Lego bricks. I think this is a really great looking set, although it's not perfect and does have a few areas that could have been improved. Obviously, this set is playing off of the recent pickup truck set from Lego. They are both retro pickups in that stylish dark red color. Lego claims theirs is a 1950s truck, but that vertical grille looks more reminiscent to the mid 40s to me. So I actually like the grille better on the Funhole truck, which is pretty close to the Chevy grille. However, the similarities with LEGO pretty much in there, as this set has a large camper integrated on the back. Speaking of, I think Retro Camper Truck would have been a much better name than Camper Van, but whatever. I like how the dark red continues as a two-tone around the bottom of the camper, and looks great with the white above it. Originally, I wasn't sure about the dark gray on the front, but I think it's fine, and is tied together well with the top and the side accent lines. But before I get distracted, let's go back to the front. The grill and bumper look great in pearl gray, and I think the shaping of the hood and fenders is really well done. The headlights light up of course, but probably should have been a yellow color if they're from the 50s. There are also pearl gray accents on the hubcaps, side rails, and door handles. The only thing that looks off to me are the doors. It just looks like something's missing. I think the contouring should have continued from the hood across the door to the cap. So I actually added a few brackets and some double cheese slopes, and I think it really improves the set. I do need to order those brackets in dark red though. Inside the cab is a single seat with a steering wheel, shifter, and some nice stickers for the dash. I'm not sure why this brick is here, maybe strength, and the other side does have a Technic brick visible. The steering wheel is way too low and surprisingly not connected to the front wheels. The wheels do turn a little, but they could benefit from a greater range of motion, and I was just disappointed that they don't connect to the steering wheel. There's also no motor build under the hood. None of these little things really matter that much to me, I just thought I'd point them out. And with my simple fix on the doors, I think the truck part still works well as a display set. The whole top of the camper lifts off easily, and thanks to the contact switch, you don't have to mess with any wires and the lights stay on down below. The cab is connected to the camper via a little doorway that you'd probably have to crawl through. The camper door hinges open and a few steps lead inside. There's a rug, an empty pantry or fridge, and a couch. The couch does not fold out into a bed, which is a bummer, but it does have a side table. Next to that is a clear walled shower with a shower head and some bottles inside. The other side has a stove top, some cabinets, a trash bin, and a sink with some loose water pieces. My only real main complaint inside is that the wires are kind of an eyesore on the back wall. I did my best to braid them and make them look neat, but I do wonder if they could have just been hidden within the counter or something. The upper half of the camper has a big door that hinges open to allow you to view inside. There are more cabinets over the sink side, along with a clock and a family portrait on the other. There's a ladder that leads up to the bed over the cab, which you can see through all the windows. There's also a bookcase and a nightstand up here. I think the roof hatch might have looked better in dark gray to match the rest of the roof, but it looks alright. It also doesn't fully close because of a wire, so if that bothers you and you'd rather it fully close, you could disable the awning lights and tuck the switch plate inside. In front of the hatch is an exhaust fan and a couple of solar panels that hinge to the side. The rear has a luggage rack with an ice cooler that opens up, revealing a few drinks inside. Next to that is the ladder that's attached to the side of the camper, and then around back is another fan or AC unit, a spare tire, and a happy camping sticker. There's also a handy place to attach the battery pack. Back around to the main side, there's a little side table that can either hinge up or even be taken off. There's also the big cloth awning that has some string lights wrapped around the edge. The awning can hinge towards the camper and it easily disconnects at the bottom when you want to take the top off. I'll mention that you can see the interior bricks behind the wheels if you're at eye level, but from other angles like up above, I don't even notice them. Finally, there's a nice little chair build. Overall, this is a great looking set. It does have a few flaws that could have been fixed in the design process, but in the end, it's a display set, and I think it meets that objective. I do suggest adding those slopes on the doors, though. This set sells for $100, which is $30 cheaper than LEGO's version, and it comes with that lighting kit. You can decide for yourself, but that sounds pretty good to me. So if you like old trucks and campers, I think you'll be pretty happy with this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a great day.